you're listening to the Round the Blind Podcast with Ben and Levi. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to hit subscribe for more content. Now let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Round the Blind. This week we are joined with Taylor Howerton from Team Foul Plate Outdoors. Um, they got a, a bunch of badass stuff going on over in, uh, in, in Quincy, Illinois with with some uh, with a, a group of guys who who uh, put up some pretty awesome content. And if you, you go check out their Instagram, they got all kinds of stuff that's that's fun to look at, uh, interesting. They got they got I mean just content that that you know you can't really find anywhere else. Um, Taylor runs a wildlife uh, photography page on Instagram as well that that uh, he finds some some shots that are second to none. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll get right into it. What's going on, Taylor? How are you guys? Thanks for uh, having me on today. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, Why don't go ahead and, and tell us tell us who you are. You know what, what you got going on. Um, you know when when you got into hunting. And I mean, you can go back as far as you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be just waterfowling. I'm uh, I'm originally from Quincy, Illinois, and uh, you know, I grew up there my whole life. And uh, just recently, with actually a um, little over a year ago. I bought a house over Missouri with my fiance, so we moved over uh, to the great state of Missouri now, just right across the uh, the river from where I grew up. And uh, yeah, I, I actually started a lot like you did, Ben. I started deer hunting. Um, that's what my dad was big into. So we'd uh, we had a lot of big whitetail around here. So we go out and we we deer hunt and stuff. And it wasn't until about high school when uh, when our good friend Tyler Gale got us uh, got us all addicted to waterfowl hunting. He uh, invited me out a couple of times and that's all it took. And, uh, I've been broke ever since, you know, yeah, man. started out, to uh, just hunting the Mississippi. And that's, uh, that's just been kind of my love is just getting on the river. Um, you know, I, I was on the river with my dad. We'd go hunt islands, um, for deer. And, and then, uh, now, uh, we're out there scouting ducks and geese on these islands, just find some potholes out there to hunt them. So it's yeah, been, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I was talking in the first episode we did um, about how like we were a bunch of, you know, 16 year old kids out on the river and, you know, yep. and did, didn't know what we were into. And it's lucky, you know, we're, we're, we're damn lucky about none of us got into anything that we, we couldn't handle. Cause, cause I mean, I mean, now, now looking back, I mean, you know, I understand how dangerous the Mississippi river is. It, it's kind of crazy that we, uh, you know, that, that we never had any, any kind of incidents, man, but, and especially 16 year old kids, man, we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, Tyler knew, um, but no, but you know, as, as far as, as far as any of us, I mean, um, you know, I mean, we didn't really know enough to, to do anything to keep us, <laughs> to keep us safe. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I could tell you countless stories where we got into somebody who we got in with somebody who, who, um, and you, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but we got in with somebody who we would expect to kind of know what they're doing. And, and, and we, we could find ourselves in some pretty <laughs> sketchy situations, but, but yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, R- real quick. I, uh, yeah, we won't name any names, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, being out there as, as young kids, I mean, just trying to go there. I mean, just that old blind that we used to have that was not made to, it was actually just made to um, hold a spot for us. And man, that thing was cold. We had big slats in the floor that you uh, you made sure not to drop anything on the floor. Otherwise, it was right down in the river. But man, just, just some of the memories that have come out of there and just um, looking back now, you know, about 10 years ago that uh, we started hunting down there, just how far we've all come as uh, waterfowl hunters and just hunters and, and uh, friends combined. It's been, it's, it's cool just to look back and just kind of go through some old videos. I found some old videos the other day of just when uh, Tyler and I had some GoPros set up on the blind and we're just going, man, what were we into those days? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, and it's just different. The river hunting is completely different. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I thought, you know, being a kind of a new hunter at the time, um, I thought we were, we were kind of, you know, um, you know, that was it. I thought that was duck hunting, yeah. you know, and then I get out to the middle of Missouri and, you know, and, um, you know, these walk in marshes and, you know, everything you do, you, you've got to be dragging all your gear. Um, and I, I just remember thinking, you know, that this is, this is two different completely, this is two completely different worlds going from river hunting to marsh hunting. Um, 
and then coming out here and expecting it to kind of be marsh hunting and you've got rivers here, but it's all tides. And I mean, you go, I mean, you've got a, I mean, you think about the Mississippi river, man, if you've got a six foot difference on the Mississippi river, I mean, you know, your season's wrecked. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, like yep. you, you got, de you got decoys everywhere. Your blinds underwater, you know, like out yes. here, like you, you have to plan for a six foot difference every day. I mean, like every six hours you have a six foot difference in your water level. And so like the, the amount of, the amount of changes that you have um, going through you know, different, different areas is crazy. And I'm sure Kentucky Levi has, has some crazy differences, you know, as well. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much I mean, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky. It's pretty much it's all the same. I mean, um, and you're you're exactly right. I mean, I, that's an everyday thing when you go over the dam from the Mississippi River or the bridge, and you're like, man, the water's up today. I like, guess weird. I, don't ever, I haven't seen it up that high. I mean, that's like, like a daily um, uh, conversation you have, whether it's with your, your, your parents or your, your grandparents, like, man, you see, why is the river up so high? Like, why are they letting all this water in? Uh, but yeah, you're exactly right with that. It's just, I mean, it could be six inches and your blind is, you know, getting swept away with the current and it's half a mile down the river in, you know, a couple minutes. So especially with the, when they, especially with, uh, with the dams and how they have the turbines going and all that, man, that current, well, it's no joke, man. Yeah, Taylor, you had a, it was a, what was it, a couple years ago, 20, 2015, I think, maybe 2016, where, where they had that, they had the flood right in the middle of duck season, and, and I mean, you're, everything you had down there was wiped out. Yeah, it wrecked us, in. I mean, it took out half our spread that year. Um, we had that stationary blind that we hunted, well, that thing made it through, I don't know, four or five floods, every year we kind of go patch it back, you know, the roof might have come off and laying it up on the island, or whatever, and we kind of just mangle it all back together, but uh that year it was right around Thanksgiving time and typically we get all all our dads together as most of them are off and uh, kind of just do one big duck hunt well that year uh, we couldn't the, the whole blind was underwater if you wanted to hunt you were going to sit on top of the roof of the blind to hunt and it was it was a mess and that kind of it's that kind of slowly uh, ended a lot of our uh, duck hunting down there we just got tired of dealing with the river and man I got mad respect for the guys that uh, hunt the main river we were kind of off on the back little uh, slough there. And, yeah, the water came up quite a bit. And we had some current off our uh, on our south side of our blind. But it's nothing like those main river guys that hunt right next to the uh, the channel. I don't know how they do it. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, we had that blind down there that what had, had what, 20 foot of water? You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> like, one like, one it, side you stepped off at 20 foot, and the other side you could wade – you know, 75 yards out in front of us, just kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and so that's what was crazy. So we, I mean, I mean, th and, th and we talk about 16 year old kids out there, you know, running, <laughs> running, you know, decoys in 20 foot of water on, on, I mean, it was a back channel of the river, but there was still, I mean, considerable amount of current. So, I mean, it, <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was sketchy, man, but. A lot of and you're talking about uh, these like little creeks and stuff off the main river. I always wanted a like a like a cornfield right off the Mississippi, man. Literally, just like you have the Mississippi, and you have a cornfield because I, you gotta think how many ducks come through that way every year. And whether it's flooded or not, you think that would still be able to you know the food's there. I mean, you still think you'd be able to pull some ducks off the main river. I've always wanted to do a hunt like that because I mean, every time you go, I mean, there's a there's one place in uh, in Indiana. When you you go from Indiana into Kentucky, I mean, there's like you look both sides and there's cornfields just down both sides. I'm like, man, I bet that's pretty good hunting, especially if the water is up one year, and some of that is flooded. You could probably have a, a damn good hunt sitting in that uh, that little corner of the, of the the field that is flooded. Yeah, we uh we were into that uh, two years ago, 2018 season. My uh my spot where I deer hunt at flooded up and. Uh, they couldn't get all the, the corn and beans out. Well, those ducks were in there thick, and we watched it for a few weeks. Water was way up in there. And we're like, all right, do we try to get permission in, uh, on, on a couple different plots in there and uh, take some youth in there and hunt them? Do we wait and hunt them uh, for our opening day? We decided to wait to opening day, and I kept checking water, checking water to, uh, depths, and we, uh, we made it work. And there was mallards, pantail, teal, gadwall geese were in there like crazy 
the couple of days I went to scout it and I've got videos on my phone, send them to the guys going, Hey guys, this is going to be a banger hunt. I'm ready. We get in there and we knocked the brakes off shovelers. It was a <laughs> shoveler smackdown. I think uh, in the two days we killed 60 birds. Um, Jeez. I think we killed, what, 40, 42, I think the first day and uh, all, but I think three or four were shovelers. It was bad. <laughs> Everybody kept going, man, let's hold off for these mallards to show up. Let's hold off for these gadwall, these pintail. And they never showed up that day. But uh, that was the closest to like a flooded yeah. cornfield right. bean field that I, I've had to go on. Hell, that's better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, it was, it was cool. It, it all kind of came together, talked to several different uh, farmers on different ground in there and, and got permission on a couple of them. And we stood and flooded a corn, shot them over uh, cut beans. He was able to get one field out and uh, before it all flooded up. But it was, it was an interesting hunt. It was a memorable hunt for sure. That's what's awesome though, is finding those kind of spots like that that aren't managed properties, you know, like and that, it's just so cool, you know. But like, I mean, you can go, you can go across the river and, and you can hunt, you know, you know, Ted Shanks, you know, and it's a managed property full of flooded corn. But I mean, like you get in those places that where it just naturally happens, man, I mean, like, that's awesome. Like we had a, we had a spot in Missouri like that. Um, the Truman Lake had flooded and it got up into the, into the timber. Um, and, and I mean, I'd never hunted timber. I mean, it's, it's not, it's still not true Arkansas timber. So, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim that it was, but you know, I'd never, I'd never hunted in trees, you know, found like a pocket of trees and, and shot ducks out of it. But I mean, it, it was, it was something else, you know, seeing the way that it, seeing the way that it worked out and it, was, it just naturally happened. You know, no, nobody, nobody pumped that water in there. Those, those birds just, just found something that, it, that was natural and got in there. So, I mean, I, I think that's awesome compared to, you know, like I said, a, a managed property for it. Yeah. Man, the more we talk about to people that's still in the Mississippi flyway, the more I'm just ready to move back, man. Screw this. <laughs> but, uh, But no, man. Um, yeah, I definitely miss hunting the Mississippi and seeing all the divers that come down from like the Great Lakes and falling, falling, falling down on the Mississippi. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm sure Ben. You know, I'm sure Ben. You've talked to Ben. We've had some pretty good hunts out here, but like again, like it's it's nothing compared to nothing compared to the Mississippi Flyway. Whether it's flooded fields or on the like on the river. There's a sheer amount of birds. It's just night and day, the two uh, flyways. And I want to say congratulations for moving out of Illinois, the shithole state. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, congratulations. My, me and my parents used to, we used to call uh, Illinois residents FIPS, fucking Illinois people. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. I, the, uh, I, met, I, met some, I met some people from, from Wisconsin. They called them FIBS, fucking Illinois bastards. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind yeah. of the same. I mean, both Man, on both sides. It's like, <laughs> it's like Paducah. It's like it's yeah, Paducah, and then you have like the river, then it's Illinois. And a lot of times they come down and shop in Paducah. And if if you see someone that's doing like 55 in the left lane, you just like, oh, they're from Illinois. Like you just automatically knew. And I until I moved to Virginia, I was like, man, Illinois drivers are like the worst in the country. Then I moved to Virginia. I'm like Virginia takes a take takes a cake. The the worst I've ever seen, man, is Kansas. That's the worst drivers I've ever seen. Tell me when, when we uh, lived in Missouri, we lived in Missouri. Yeah. We'd go over to we'd go over to Kansas City, and I, I mean, I, and I shit you not. I mean, I'm not even kidding. Like you you would be driving in Kansas City, and as soon as you saw the "Welcome to Kansas" sign, the person that you were following or the person that was following you that was driving perfectly civilized, as soon as they crossed that state line, decided they were fucking idiots and couldn't figure out how the hell to <laughs> how the hell to, to control the speed of their their vehicle or how to not ride your ass, not how to pa not how to pass you and then slam the brakes on right in front of you. And it, it it didn't just happen once, you know. Like yeah, I mean, the, the worst I've ever seen is Kansas, but I mean, oh nothing I tell you oh what. man I, I i hate dumb drivers i've seen for sure of them lately it's been <laughs> awful so so what's what i mean i think uh levi and i both kind of know a little bit um i mean 
we, we not just a little bit, we know about Team Foul Played. Um, but go ahead and tell our listeners who, who might not know, uh, what, what is Team Foul Played and um, who they are and what, what does it consist of? What's the overall goal of it? Yeah, so we, uh, um, Tyler Gale and I started uh, Team Foul Played, um, whew, man, back when I was in college and stuff. And just, we wanted to just kind of get out there on, on social media and just, we had all these pictures we're like, man, let, what, what are we going to do with them? Let's, we want to shoot some video. We want to do you know, all this, this big stuff. And uh, so him and I co-founded it and came up and just, it's just this group of guys that, uh, you know, we all kind of hunt together and uh, just want to share our passion for you know, what we do, why, why we love to get outdoors um, and just want to share it with others that uh, maybe people that haven't gone hunting or are interested in hunting, um, all of that. And then now, uh, now we kind of moved on. Tyler, uh, started rectum waterfowl. So he, uh, he founded that up. So he kind of left team foul played, um, when he moved out to Kansas and now down to Texas and now back home. So, uh, him and I kind of co-spired together with a, a lot of stuff we're doing. And then, um, but now we started kind of branching out with team foul played doing, um, t-shirts and hats and stuff. Um, hoodies. I've got a couple different apparel lines that we brought out. We brought out one for one I'm wearing now is for our snow goose season. And I know we're going to talk about some snow geese later. So I had to, had to rock the snow goose one tonight. But then uh, we also threw out a fishing one. And I got a couple more designs in the works for uh, maybe this fall into next spring. But that's what we just kind of branched it off with is just making it into a, an apparel organization a little bit now. Yeah, I like that shirt, man. I was looking at that when we first came on. That's a, that's a – I like the design. You got like the reeds and, and like the uh, the letters and all that. That's a cool shirt. Yeah. He was looking at your tits. Yeah, he was. That's exactly what it is. Nice tits, man. Yeah, we uh, we had a bunch of people going, "Hey, you got apparel out yet? You got apparel? We want we want some apparel for this." And uh, this was the first one we did. We're like, "Hey, it's snow goose season. Um, I need some white hoodies for." We were laying out in the fields and we knew some other guys. They were like, "Hey, let's just do the uh, snow goose one." And then uh, we threw a couple other colors, and I had so many people going, oh, maybe we want that. I had some people at work that don't even hunt, and they're like, man, these hoodies are just awesome. So uh, so you're wearing a TFP shirt and a Ducks hat. You, you, you don't have a TFP in any TFP hat? I, I do. I just I threw this one early, on earlier day because it was in my truck. And uh, uh, I don't know. I got, what, one or two hanging up back there. I don't even know where my orange one is. Yeah, I'll go switch it real quick. Where'd you go? You disappeared. Oh, I got that virtual background, so you don't see all my hats and stuff in the background. No, right. but, uh, hey. there's a there you go. there's a blaze orange. Yeah, nice. Right there. There's the, that lime green in the same style, and then uh, of course that it came one for. You gotta get the blaze. You, know, time. you gotta get. You gotta have mossy oak. Yeah. We don't. We don't Something wear that real tree. Right. We don't wear real tree around here. It's for girls. But uh, I, I told I told Ben to he needs to get together, he needs to get his shit together about making some round the blind stuff. Yeah. And of course, he just you know dropped the ball. <laughs> He's, he worked till eleven o'clock. Doesn't do anything else. So it's just typical. Ben. <laughs> we'll go with that, man. Um, no, Le- <laughs> Levi Levi tended to um, create a a podcast and and ask for um, you know information or ask for me to create stuff with the least creative person that you could possibly find <laughs> so um yeah well, i mean well if if he gets if he gets like a, a you know like a, you know some crayon drawings or something with like stick letters i mean that'll that'll probably be the best at all I can provide. <laughs> <laughs> no um but no I, so i i saw some on your instagram um and it was might have been a little while back, but you had some TFP um, engraving on some, you know, some Yeti mugs and some other stuff like yeah. that. Um, is, is that something that, that you guys are doing or is that something? Because I know you you used to work at that. Uh, um, I don't know if it, if it, I don't color, know if it was. Color like, and camera graphics. That place. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> I didn't know if that yeah. was something that, that, that they did for you or you, you kind of did when you were working there or if. Uh, so the, the engraved uh, you know. mugs actually had my, my cousin do here in town. Um, she owns a, an awards company starting awards here in Quincy and uh she did all that up for me um actually I have one in the other room that uh, that's Tyler still that I haven't gave him it's been a while but uh yeah she did all the engraving on, on all those for me 
But then uh, this cup I'm drinking out of diet. It's hard to see. It keeps wanting to cut out with that camo. Um, no, I actually did that one. I got to dip that one back. Uh, well, that's been a couple years back. So I, I wanted to do some some dip cups and put some uh, some names on them and stuff. And, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not working there anymore, and uh, that company is uh, no longer together. So that one kind of kind of went out on on that. So we won't be able to do many cups as far as have them dipped in camo and uh, names on them. Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, marketing design too. I mean, everyone everyone loves those Yeti cups. I mean, everyone loves again mossy oak blades. It's one of the best camo patterns ever. Yep. So uh, I mean, that's a great yep. that's great marketing. Um, and then for TFP, do you guys plan on like expanding anything, or y'all just kind of just kind of just getting your feet wet with the apparel side right now? We kind of getting our feet wet with the apparel side. Um, you know, I, we've got we were throwing out some um, barrel stickers I had back for a while, and then um, some like window decals and whatnot. So we ha we have some of those still around if anybody wants to shoot me a message i can get some out to some people um just kind of get our feet with that first and then then we'll see what what we might expand to i looked at maybe getting some jackets and stuff embroidered but man embroidery just is so expensive yeah for sure um did you come up with the uh the logo or did you did you go somewhere to have it done so uh the original logo we had we had um one of the guys that met on, online, he ended up creating it for us. And then uh, this logo now, I ended up designing. Um, we used to have it all team foul play, and it was just all real big and everything else. So I was like, man, I wanted to, I want to condense it down just a little bit and, and be able to put it more on hats and cups and uh, t-shirts and whatnot. So yeah, I actually made this one, um, and it's got y'all can see very well, but on on the T, we've got some ducks running through it, and then the F has a couple antlers because we got guys that you know. We're all big waterfowl hunters, but we're also yeah. Hunting. And then yeah. uh, the peas got a mallard got a duck in it, flying in it too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 basic, it's simple, and it looks good. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to try to put a fish in there somewhere, but I was like, man, well, uh, we might do a little rebrand with on a TFP with some with some fish in it and stuff. In due time, you you can work that in there. Yeah. We did uh, bust out, so like this was the first shirts we had with the uh, snow geese, and then we did um, a summer apparel because I had a bunch of people asking about like tank tops and uh, that kind of stuff. So we did a real bright like blade, blaze orange, neon orange, uh, neon green, and had a fish and stuff coming through it and looked like somebody's catching a fish. It, it was a pretty cool design as well. So um, what all what all uh, platforms are you on? Uh, or just TFP on, I guess. So ma mainly is Instagram. Um, I post through Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, for a while there, Tyler was running all of our, our Twitter stuff. He's a Twitter guy. I I don't mess with Twitter. I don't understand it enough to to run it enough and you know be communicating with everybody. Nor do I have the time um, to try to run uh, that Instagram plus my personal Instagram with um, my photography stuff. So I stick to Instagram and Facebook are our two main ones. And then um, we're on we're on YouTube. We've got a couple videos out on there. Um, I've been kind of lazy lately on editing videos and shooting videos. I've been more shooting pictures and stuff ever since I uh, found out that man, photography is a lot of fun when you get out there and uh, just gonna sit and watch watch these birds come in. You know, especially during uh, the off season, it just gives you something to do, something to shoot them with, except the uh, besides the gun. So, so where are you guys at on, on Instagram? I know you guys are, are building and, and growing and I mean, I mean, man, we're, TFP is TFP has become something. I mean, I mean, it's not a small thing. No, we're pushing. I think I'm going to pull it up right here. That's my dad sitting here trying to call me. Of course. Um, uh, we're pushing 10, 10,000. So we're at uh, 9,660 as of right, right now. I would, I'd love to see it over 10,000 by the end of the year. Yeah, me and Ben are pretty close to 10,000, too. No, I'm playing. Um, <laughs> you guys are close, yeah. <laughs> um, so my big question, right, uh, my big question for, you know, photography and filming, because um, I know I look, I try to YouTube you know, like tips and tricks for filming waterfowl, because it's not like yeah. deer 
where, you know, no. it's, it's on the ground and all you have to do is just move it kind of like back and forth for the most part. So um, if someone is looking at getting into filming, whether they're in a layout blind or if they're in a boat or just in a, like, like an A-frame blind, something like that, what's, what's some like tips um, that you can like, give someone? Like, do they need like a, get a gimbal or is it just, I mean, I, like I said, I, I filmed the goose on the other day and I just had it on a tripod and all of a sudden I missed, you know, there's a lot of passing shots and I missed most of them. But what were some like some tips that you, you could give someone for either filming or photoing during a duck? Hunt? Yeah. So filming, trying to, especially trying to self film. That's, I mean, it's hard. I, I've done a couple of self film deer hunts and um, you got to get by with that a little bit. You know, you're looking at one target versus all these ducks moving around. Um, main thing is if you can get a tripod get your film steady nothing is worse than sitting there somebody's shaking with the camera and you're all excited or just jerking around i can't i have a hard time watching that stuff or even um, or shooting your gopro or shooting your gopro yeah i don't know who would shoot my gopro definitely wasn't me. <sighs> i got that video somewhere too but uh yeah uh a lot of guys like those head mounts. Like, like Bobby Guy does a, a good job with his head mount um, with his GoPro. And um, that, that's not my style. I'd rather have somebody sit back with, with a tripod and, and record. Main thing is I'd, I'd go with a wider angle lens. That'd be my biggest tip is, yeah, you want to be able to get in some tight shots. But if, if you keep everything a little bit wider, it doesn't shake as much. The, the more you zoom in, every little micro movement of that camera it, it goes from just being this little movement to just massive so i would do a wider angle lens for a lot of that we my big tip and i know if you're gonna use a tripod to use a, a fluid head camera mount yes. that way it's not all shaky whenever you're trying to move it left to right or up or down either those uh those ten dollar walmart tripods work well if you're just going to sit a camera on there and just leave it not touch it right yeah fluid heads are, are extremely nice my tripod is nothing Nothing fancy, but I end up spending a little bit more to, to get a nice fluid head on it. Where those those nice painting shots back and forth, you can uh, they're much smoother. Yeah, mine's uh mine's rigged up. I have the, the tripod or the Walmart tripod, and I have the fluid head on top of it. <laughs> so it's it's uh it's rigged up. I, I looked on the Amazon; they're like 120 bucks for the tripod and the fluid head i'm like i don't know if i want to spend that so i spent like 40 bucks on a, a fluid head and I, I got it on there and it works so i mean whatever as long as it works and you're getting um uh, man you can with photography i'm finding out you can spend as much as you want to spend like stuff gets expensive quick i uh, especially the lenses i didn't realize how expensive the lenses were until i started really looking at them Ooh, i i've got some just some cheap lenses like i I've got two of the kit lenses that you know came with my camera, and then I ended up buying a 50 millimeter because those are those are a great lens. Everybody you know calls them the Nifty 50. You do a lot with them. Actually, I just um, I'm editing some pictures right before we started this uh, podcast. I was editing some pictures off my 50 millimeter lens, um, and, and they're they're cheap. I think I want to I spent 75 bucks on it, but you can do so much with them, and they're so versatile. But then last year for Christmas, my uh, my parents and my fiance went in together and, and bought me a uh, um, Tamron 150 to set, uh, 600 millimeter lens. And man, that thing reaches out there. And it was, yeah. It was fun. So what kind of camera do you, do, uh, do you use? And then what's like a good starter camera for someone if they're wanting to get into this like self-filming or. So I run a Nikon camera. Uh, my, my first camera was a, a Nikon D5500 that I bought from uh, my fiance's aunt. And it's just a, a real cheap, I think it goes for 500 bucks new, and especially now they've got newer models. Um, but it's just been a great camera. It's got a, a little flip out uh, viewfinder on the back so you can get some different angles, you know, so you're not just sitting there trying to go oh, guessing where, where your shots are. Um, I like that one. It, it was cheap. It was easy. And then um, I was fortunate enough to just kind of be getting into this and, and shoot some pictures with it getting to where I was comfortable with it. And then a guy at work goes, Hey, I want you to try out this um, Nikon D4S, which is Nikon's uh, more professional end side of their cameras. And that, that's what I shoot most of my stuff with now is the, is the D4S. It's a full frame camera. It's is been that nice. a DSLR? 
Yeah, it's a DSLR camera. Yeah. So, but I got a Canon, I got a Canon Vixia. Mm -hmm. And for the money, that's really good. Started cameras, shoots really good low light. Just got a, uh, um, a, a, a flash or like a little flashlight on there. So like if you are deer hunting mm -hmm. and you shoot one, you have that little flashlight. Um, and I bought it from a buddy. He gave it to me. He gave me that. Some like, what, like some lenses. Um, and some filters for like 200 bucks man it, it was I, he, he cut me a deal on it and i love that damn thing it, it's it, it shoots really good footage for like the price yeah i mean as we we're saying earlier I mean, you can go as expensive as you want um i was talking to some guys on instagram just um he was putting up his lens i'm like man but that was an armor leg and he's like yeah that was a six thousand dollar lens right there i was like oh man man one day Hunting is expensive as, as is, much less yes. getting into the whole filming and even editing. I mean, there's some programs that are like $900, $800 just for just the editing program, mm -hmm. which is insane. And then if you want people to, to edit for you, that's another five or $2,000 for them to edit for you, depending on like different packages you can run, stuff like that. I mean, it, like, it, when you say you can get expensive as you want, that's – the absolute truth that's from actually hunting like getting to your blind to sh to killing the game to recording you killing it to cleaning and pro like it's <laughs> hands down the most expensive thing you can probably get into oh man yeah as uh, everybody says you know you get into waterfowl hunting you're broke for the rest of your life i mean <laughs> it's over with. yeah yep but um, experiences you get is amazing. So stay on the subject of cameras. Um, you know, I just went out last year and got a GoPro whenever me and my, um, when I went to North Dakota. And I think the big aspect for, at least for me personally, is that, you know, 20, 30 years down the road. Um, and we, and, and you or whoever is on the hunt with you, you want to be able to relive that moment. You know what I mean? So I think that's a big, like, that's, I think that's a big, appeal for filming hunts not only you know get cloud on it youtube or twitter you know whatever i mean but for me personally it's like i want to be able to rewatch that when i when i'm 50 or 60 years old i'm like man that was that was a cool hunt and like remember it how it actually happened you know what i mean because you know after you know after so many years it kind of gets swayed one way or the other but i mean if you actually watch it it kind of brings you back to that moment same thing with with mounts i mean Mounts the same way. Every time I look at um, my deer mount or the ducks, so like I, it takes me back to that morning. Um, but uh, but yeah, what was, what was the big aspect? Like, what, what was you um, getting cameras? Was it for T TFB or was it something more personal? Yeah, a little bit of both. Like, I mean, we I got GoPro originally um, for TFB and, and to do hunting stuff. You know, I had it out. I had an old, old GoPro um, back this when I was deer hunting and stuff. And I was like, man, I just, I just wanted to be able to relive it like you're, you were just talking about. Or go home and be like, man, dad, did you see this buck? You should see this buck walk by tonight. Um, or go back and show my friends, man, look, look, what, look what we did today out in the blind. And that was the big thing. And then, you know, we just kind of rolled it over with TFP. And um, I have, I've got a GoPro and I ended up buying another one for my brother. Um, Tyler had one. So we were rolling like three different GoPros. Uh, and a couple of the other guys I hunt with now uh, had one. And I just remember, I'm glad I had, I had two. We were on this uh, honker hunt over by Kansas City. And, man, it was a honker beat down. They, uh, the hospitality from these farmers, they got out there and hunted with us. And uh, just looking back, I can get, like, guys, do you remember that hunt? And uh, we recorded it. You know, I edited it all up and stuff. And, it wasn't but a year, maybe a year and a half later, the old man um, ends up passing away and stuff. But now his uh, son and his grandson have a video of that hunt that they were all on and stuff too. So, you know, right back to what you were saying, Levi, with just looking back 50, 60 years and going, man, that was a fun time. Yeah, that's awesome. Especially like whenever, like if someone does pass away, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of like a memorial type deal, you kind of, you know – remember the good times yes for sure if only if only there was someone that lived close to kansas city that didn't get invited on that hunt 
I was the I was invited <laughs> on the hunt, barely. Oh, no, you're yikes. No, it's, no it's, it's all good, man. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, it was. What do we roll? We roll over there with four, four or five. I think four or five of us ended up being like seven guys total. And uh, you want to talk about the easiest hiding, hunting the works? It was a, it was a cattle field uh, that had a pond in it, and we we set up on on the grass grassy side of it. But we're like, man, we don't know where we're gonna hide. So we're talking to the farmer and stuff a couple of days before the hunt. And uh, he goes, well, I'm just going to roll a, a swap of the hay out there for my, for my cattle. And we'll see. Geese kept pouring in there. They'd be around it. But, you know, they're sitting there eating off the grass and everything. So that morning, he, he brings the truck back out, rolls us two big uh, lines of, of hay there. We had the layup lines right on top of them. And, man, we disappeared. Those geese didn't know what hit them. Damn, Ben, he's just rubbing it in, huh? Uh, Sorry, man. No, man. I mean, yeah. it, it's all good. I, I, I understand how invited, how getting invited on hunts works, man. I, I would, I wouldn't have wanted to shove my, um, I wouldn't want to shove my presence uh, on everybody and, and inconvenience them. But anyways, um, so I mean, go back to after somebody shot a goat. I don't know. <laughs> So, so the GoPro story, man, we, we were, Taylor, Taylor came down and, and hunted, hunted with me for, for opening day at teal season. I don't remember what year it was a couple, a couple years back. Um, this day ended up, it ended up being a pretty bad day. <laughs> so we shot 10, duh, we shot 10 teal, but, um, we, we had a group of about, I don't know, what, 10, 10 teal come in and we, we shot into yeah. them and, and uh, I pulled up on a lead bird and I know for a fact the bird that I killed and then a couple, you know, Taylor and a couple of the other guys, they shot and we, we had killed, we killed four teal out of it, four birds. I won't say four teal. We killed four birds out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I went and I went and picked up the bird that I know that I shot. It's a wood duck. And I said, Oh my gosh. So I, I mean, I shot the wood duck. Um, and it, and, and some guys were, so were this going is the out. trip you're telling me about. I remember, yeah. this, I remember this. Yeah. Story. Yep. Yeah, so, so we're going out and, uh, or some guys are going out and they're going past us and, and they call the warden on us saying that we're shooting a bunch of, shooting a bunch of wood ducks. Warden comes out, he's just doing his job. Um, but he comes up and he, you know, he's BSing with us and he says, well, who shot the wood duck? No, oh, I, I shot the wood duck. And he said, well, he, at first he said, we hear, we heard you guys were out here shooting wood ducks. I was like, we're not out here shooting wood ducks. I mean, we, we weren't shooting into groups of wood ducks. We shot into a group of teal that happened to have a wood duck in it. And I mean, it's my fault. I should have paid attention that the bird that I pulled up on, um, you know, I, I deserved to get a ticket. Um, so we, we, you know, I told him, you know, I shot the wood duck. We go back to the, uh, we go back to the boat ramp and I'm telling the warden, you know, I was like, I shot the wood duck. It was me, you know, not, nobody else. We had a couple of guys who was their first time hunt, hunt ever duck hunting. So I told him, I was like, hey, you know, I shot the wood duck. I, I didn't, I didn't want these guys or, or Taylor to get hemmed up. And I didn't want these other guys to their first experience duck hunting to be a bad one. Well, the warden pulls us up and there, you know, we get back to his truck and he's telling us, like, oh yeah, we'll get it all sorted out. Basically tell me it's going to be fine. And um, we get up there and he says, yeah, so who shot when that wood duck was killed? And so, I mean, I mean, everybody raised their hand. I mean, we shot into a group of 10 teal. I mean, like, I mean, ten, what we thought, you know, were nine teal and one wood duck. <laughs> I mean, um, so we, you know, we tell them and they raise their hand and everyone who raises their hand got tickets. And I'm like, that. I mean, come on, you know, I shot that, I shot the duck, you know, like that. It's not like we were shooting a group of wood ducks. If we're shooting into a group of wood ducks and yeah, everybody, everybody shoot a ticket, but I shot the wood duck and the rest of the ducks were teal. So he gave I think that kind of goes back to to what what David was saying too. It's just they're not really out to catch poachers really anymore. It's more of like a cash cow. Yeah, you know what I mean. That, what that, they can do to get. Yeah. So I argued with the guy. Yeah, because it was an it's an honest mistake. Yeah, I argued with the guy. I said, "Give me the ticket." I wasn't I wasn't saying him not to give anybody. I was like, "Give me the ticket." I shot the duck. So we're arguing with the guy, and he ends up telling me he's like, "Well." He's like, so here's, we, we can do this one of two ways. He's like, either everybody's getting a ticket or you're going to go to court 
he tried to say for something about like the abuse of an out of like an out of uh, season bird, basically poaching, um, telling me that like that I would go to court for poaching. And I was like, I told him, I was like, that's bullshit, man. It's like all you're trying to do is get a big charge, whether it's five guys getting two hundred and fifty dollar tickets or one guy getting a big charge. You don't care what it is. You just want a big charge, one way or the other. And I mean. And I think they, they ended up, you know, just saying, you know, cause he threatened that, you know, the, you know, Taylor and the other guys, they were just like, look, we'll, we'll just take it, you know, because rather than, you know, me face the, the charges of poaching, you know, they said, screw it, you know, we'll, we'll just deal with it. But, but yeah, so Taylor got a GoPro shot cause we, we stuck it on the, on the mojo pole cause he's teal. It was, it was awesome the way we were, they were doing. It. I mean, uh, the buddy, one of the guys was with us. At, I mean, before, I mean, before sunrise, teal were actually buzzing and they hit hit the side of his head with their wings i mean it, i mean they were that low and they're buzzing everywhere i mean it was it was awesome um so taylor goes out and he sticks the gopro to the to the mojo pole to try to get some of the shots of them. i mean he ended up getting some pretty some pretty awesome shots but uh but yeah his his gopro got shot <laughs> <laughs> oh man ben not to rub it in but uh i just pulled up my finder here on, on the, uh, the computer. And like the first thing that pops up is seven man limit of geese. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we'll, we'll, we'll move on from this topic because I, <laughs> you know, t- Taylor's rubbing it in and I don't, I don't want it to get too, too brutal in here. Um, but anyways, um, uh, so when you're, when you're doing your photography stuff, I've actually heard of some guys, um, some, some of the guys who, who get, who get featured in like Ducks Unlimited or gets, get featured in some of those big magazines. Um, I've actually heard of them like going out, like they're hunting. I mean, they take like a layout boat or like a layout blind and they, they go and they, they hunt where the, where they know the birds are, are roosting. And then, uh, and then they, they go and they just take pictures of them and, and that's how they get such awesome photography. But I mean, do, do you do stuff like that? Or is that something that you, if you looked into or like wanted to do? I've wanted to, I mean, I want to lay up boats so bad. I want to let, you know, use it for photography and just to, to hunt out of, but I just can't pull the trigger on it. And it's just so expensive. It's one of those things, you know, it, it's waterfowl hunting. I like, to, I like to hunt with a couple other guys and if, if they don't have boats, it, it kind of defeats the purpose. You know, we could hunt kayaks and stuff, but um, I don't necessarily go out and uh, set a bunch of decoys just for pictures. I, I've, I've thought about it and I probably will come springtime. You know, a lot of guys will, will take that. And I've even seen them use um, dog hides, you know, a double-ended or double-sided dog hide where it's open on both ends. And then they'll kind of throw a ghillie blanket over their back and just sit in there with a little tripod and get some pretty sweet pictures uh, that way. But, uh, you know, I've snuck down um, back where we had that uh, spoonbill beat down. Every spring, it, it, you know, with the Mississippi River, it, it floods up in there. And they don't care that there's no um, standing crop in there. Then birds always are in there, and you're trying to feed on whatever they can. And I've gone down there and just kind of sat in the woods for a little bit and waited for waited for some of my shots. Or if I'm out fishing, um, you know, I'm always got the camera with me just in case, you know, Dad's catching a good fish or I catch a fish, whatever, and looking for those shots. And uh, that's where I've come across several of my um, my my pictures I've taken. And then this one I've got as my background here of these geese coming in. I want to say I've got that as on a canvas. I've got several canvases right now um, at Quincy Medical Group there in Quincy uh, where my fiance works and stuff that hopefully once this COVID stuff dies down, that they're going to have some more money that they can, uh, they can pay me and, and actually buy these canvases from me. But I'll go out down to like the riverfront and I'll sit there for an hour or so and uh, you know, get some of those pictures or I've got some, some diver pictures where um I'll say, hey, I'm I'm gonna shoot at a group of ducks, and then I'm gonna take pictures of the next group of ducks, and you know I kind of go back and forth, because I am a hunter. I, I do want to shoot shoot some ducks. I mean that's what I got up at you know four in the morning for, or if not earlier. Um, but I'll sit out there. Decoys are already all set. Why not? Why not get the guys you know shooting the birds, you know, shells coming out of their guns, um, feather pillows coming off the birds, you know whatever. So will you like uh, will other guys like trade off like we like if you shoot one, then you'll give it to old Joe at the end, then he'll like take pictures, or is it kind of like 
is like is that camera like your baby and you don't want like if something happens to it you don't want anyone else to kind of mess with it he doesn't know the other people you hunt with <laughs> absolutely yeah, not man. are they like ben yeah i've hunted with ben a couple times yeah, that, that's the kind of people i'm around uh no uh, i got a couple different groups of guys i hunt with and uh no mo- most of the time it's just me shooting pictures if my fiance goes um sometimes i'll hand her the camera but with, with dslrs I mean, you, you probably know this it's they, it's hard sometimes i painted dad my camera and i go back to the pictures i'm like oh that one's blurry oh man why did you take it this way you definitely have to have some experience especially the dslrs are not very uh beginner friendly and especially someone like ben that came and turned their phone phone alarm off <laughs> um he's definitely not operating a dslr <laughs> no no so it, 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 it stays in front of me um man it was it was crazy you know we were talking about shooting and, and trying to shoot pictures um i was running my dog with the group of guys you know hunting running my boat and trying to take pictures all at the same time yeah for sure i mean even that like goose hunt they were um you just had silhouettes out they weren't they, they weren't really wanting to land they were wanting they wanted to land but something was just off and they didn't like it so a lot a lot of the shots were passing so i'm shooting and then like after i shoot i'm trying to like turn the camera around and get on like the birds like either getting up and coming back around or seeing birds fall whatever i'm like man it's like so if they're because i was hoping that we had one group come around us and look like they're just going to finish just perfect around the decoys but of course they didn't so I pretty much all the shots were passing so it kind of sucks but at the same time it's just like you said i mean i want i want i want meat for the freezer i want to go home and eat eat goose that night or duck whatever it is so i mean if if i don't if i don't get the kill shot every time whatever man it's like i'm more worried about not coming down with the actual gun for sure um but that that, that story i was telling you about uh, was the day that we actually end up killing um my first pintail and we had a couple guys it was, it was kind of a cluster how it all happened um two two of us we roll up and it's it's public land but we we've got our our blind in there well i was wasn't technically part of this blind with these guys these guys i hunt with all the time but um i guess i didn't tell them that morning that hey i was gonna go out the blind and hunt well they told a couple other of their friends that they could go hunt it we roll in there i'm like great somebody's already jumping our blind we uh we ended up hunting together. Um, I knew the guys ended up hunt, I've hunted with them a couple times and uh, they were about to leave when the, this group of mallards come over and had that one Drake pintail in it. So we pull up, shoot the birds. I hurry up, try to grab the camera. The dog's already sent trying to get um, a couple down mallards. So I'm trying to get the boat to go get, uh, get this pintail and I end up missing uh, the pintail with the camera. Uh, the dog bringing it back to me and stuff, but uh, I'm out out in the boat trying to shoot pictures of my dog on the bank, you know, coming back, and it it was crazy. Yeah, for sure. Was there was there a, was there a fight about who shot the pintail, or do you like? Oh no, I knew that, that's mine. So Le- Levi's it was alluding kind of between two Levi's, of us. Al- Levi's alluding to the argument between <laughs> I I shot the black duck that he has mounted in his house. Who, he hey, all I got to say is possession this is, this is, is nine-tenths of the law. This is what he's alluded nine to. nine-tenths of the law. This I is, shot it. I killed this it. Is, this I was going to fire he's... the last shot when it fell. <laughs> it's okay, Ben. It's all right. This, hey, this, is, what, this, is, shot... what he's, this is what he's alluding to. And he, for some hey, reason. Taylor, see, for hey, some... Taylor, you see that widget behind him? I shot that too. I it's... let him have it. <laughs> no, he didn't. But anyways, the – the same he he seems to have the same argument every week or every episode really and he's, our listeners are probably going to start getting tired of of Levi bringing up the same argument of whether or not it was a simple he question shot, Ben he shot my black duck but there was obviously ulterior motives behind the question but I also Jeez, I didn't realize how I didn't realize well, you're such like you hold grudges you bring up you, the goose hunt with Taylor you, you now took, bring up a black the black duck. You that took my black duck. Talking about you took my black duck. Why would I not hold a grudge, Taylor? I also what? am interested. Were there fights over the pintail? No. So um, Ben, you know Todd. It, it was Todd. It was Todd Gale and I 
that that okay. pulled up on, on on the pintail and stuff, and it was kill him, boom. I didn't even, he didn't know I shot. I didn't know he shot one of those same times. Um, and he goes, Hey, and goes, I'm not a hundred percent sure which one was actually killed it, but ended up, it ended up in my freezer. So it's going to go get mounted. But, uh, the other, the other couple guys, they, uh, they told us they're like, Hey, or one guy in the blind goes, I've already killed pintails. He goes, you guys haven't, he goes, you guys shoot, shoot it. And then the other guy, um, he goes, yeah, you said kill him, and my gun wasn't even up, and y'all were shooting already, and that pintail was falling. So <laughs> it was between Todd and I. We both got pictures with it and stuff. We both got the, the memories and everything else with it. But, uh, yeah, it ended up in my freezer. Hell yeah, so man, what Ben awesome, isn't though. telling you, what Listen, Ben isn't man. telling you. Le- right, Levi, no, 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 no. Ben, he has to it. make everybody Hush feel it. better no, as if he no, shot the no. black duck. You brought it up. I'm the good Samaritan you, who you let brought him it up. have it. Okay, for – you're done talking, so I can end this argument. <laughs> the bird flew in. We both shot, right? We both shot. Then he was like, yeah, man, you killed that one. I'm like, all right, cool. Then when he decided when I was he decided being I was a black nice because he had a rough day the day before. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I never have a rough day shooting, first off. Second off, he was like, yeah, man, I think it was a gadwall. So he's like, he thought it was a gadwall, so he's going to give it to me. I'm like, all right, cool. Come to find out, it was a freaking black duck. But uh, but yeah, I'll, that was the end of the discussion. You you said before you even got it, it was mine. So stop it, Ben. All right. Or I'm gonna make my own podcast, and we'll just do better than you. <laughs> <laughs> even though this is my podcast too, so I mean you can just have this too, whatever. Try and take my duck, my podcast, whatever. I mean. I'm just playing, dude. You don't have to give. I know. I know you're sensitive, but this isn't about us. This is about Taylor. So shut up. All right. <laughs> all right Ask him so, questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> so or, I know you already said that you had. Uh, you already had your, your some of your canvases up in in Quincy Medical Group, and for people who don't listen, who aren't listening, uh, Quincy, Illinois is is the the largest town, probably about what Taylor, 80, 90 miles. In, in on the oh, western yeah. side of Illinois, I mean, maybe even long, maybe even further yeah. than that. So the, I mean, anybody within the vicinity, they go to Quincy Medical Group. So it's not a small, it's not a small facility at all. I mean, it's it's a it's a big, it's a it's a big building. So, um, and to have to have you know Quincy Medical Group, um, taking some kind of stuff to put up and put up in their facility, it isn't no small feat. Um, so, are, do you have any other aspirations to kind of put, um? to kind of put some stuff or to do other things with your, your uh, photography, like, you you know, get it in magazines or um, do you, do you even, how how do you go about that? Um, Or are are you following those avenues or, or, uh, or these kind of goals for the future? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I I would love to have my stuff everywhere, everywhere and anywhere. Uh, You know, the more, more places, the better. Uh, I just like, I don't necessarily care about my name getting out there as much. Like, as just, I just want to share what I do and what I love and just how cool um, wildlife is mixed with photography um, more than anything else. And uh, I know we, I made some calendars last year for, uh, I think for 2020 and man, I shouldn't make 2020 calendars. Dang 2020. Uh, but I plan on doing a little bit th- uh, again this year. Uh, so I, I got, got those out there. Uh, got quite a few sold just just the people uh, people that that hunt but pe- people that also don't They're, that they just wanted I mean I just like like how these geese are coming in you know everybody sees Canadian geese everywhere and they're like man that's just some cool pictures but yeah I would love to have it my stuff in magazines and what whatnot I've sent a couple things to um, DU when they had some of their their contests going on um, I get in on some of these contests on, on Instagram uh, Tangle Free had a big one um, they're, they're, uh, they're judge, man, Joel on there. He, he's got some amazing pictures and I'm, I'm always trying to talk, talk to him and just kind of figuring out, pick his brain on what, what he does to get his name out there and, and make his pictures so much better. But yeah. I so, do they, to... so do they give you feedback? Like, I mean, when you put these into contests, I mean, do they, do they reach out and say anything or, or is it just kind of like a, Hey, you, you know, you didn't win it or you did, or do you, do you ever have anybody come back to you and say, Hey man, like, you, you didn't win this this competition but like 
um, you know, we're, we're gonna, you know, you, you know, we see where, where you're going or we see what you're doing. Cause this is not, I'm not, I mean, this isn't a relatively new thing for you. I mean, you've been doing this for TFP for, for, you know, what, over 10 years now, but, um, yeah, but you've, yeah. but you've, you're, you're kind of, you're kind of honing in on something you want to do individually, um, you know, now. So, I mean, is this something that, that you just haven't, you know, you're, you're kind of waiting for, for more opportunities or is it something you're kind of communicating with people on a, on a regular basis? I'm always trying to network with people. Um, you know, I, I, I think the biggest thing is networking. Like if you're not talking to other people and just, just trying to get connections everywhere, um, then what are you doing? Because, uh, I, I, I want that feedback, you know, like you were saying, yep. Uh, I have got some feedback from, from some people going, Hey, yeah, you know, awesome stuff, you know, think about doing this, Hey, tweak this a little bit, um, you know, along those lines. And, and I, I, on my social media, my personal page, I like to, to follow like-minded people. Um, and I've heard guys say, Hey, if, if you want to be a photographer and stuff, don't follow any photographers that are doing what you do because you'll subconsciously start you know, mirroring everything that they do. And you should just create your own style. I think that's stupid. Like I want to follow these guys cause I want to be inspired. Um, I did, I, I've got Hunter guy up in Nebraska and stuff. Um, I started following him and, and man, he, he, he followed me and was like, dude, you've got some amazing stuff. And I'm looking at his pictures going, dude, my stuff ain't nothing compared to yours. And, uh, but just watching a couple of the, the photos that he took. And I'm like, man, I want to do something similar. So I would do similar stuff to his. And then, um, you know, sent to him. I was like, hey, man, thanks for, thanks for the inspiration. And uh, just getting more ideas. We just kind of collaborate back and forth on, you know, what's the next thing to do. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so, yeah, I can definitely see what they say about, like, you're going to kind of fall like the- fall into like their I guess their niche because like I mean it's, it's art at the end of the day mm-hmm. and then you know I mean it seems like yeah. people who have like their own little niche or their own little category or how they do things really blow up and I think that's kind of like I, mean, I can see both sides like you it's like you, you can you can see how where you can pull from like three or four different people and put it into your your photo but I can also see what that person is saying too is like don't don't follow into what they're doing because you're not going to be able to set yourself apart from the other, the other people that takes pictures of the same things, if that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. So, so what, what differentiates between like a, like a good picture or, you know, like good, good, you know, content versus like great or even like great versus elite, you know, cause like I, I can look at a picture. I mean, I've already said this multiple times this episode, but I'm, I'm not creative at all. I mean, when I say it, I mean, I legitimately mean it. Um, but like if, if I look at two pictures and I mean, I, the only thing I'm going to notice is like if, if one's more clear or one's blurry, you know, to me, I, I'm not, I'm going to have trouble seeing like what, I mean, if both of them the same amount of clear to me, they're, they're equal. You know what I mean? So like that, that's just, yeah. that's just my, that's just my thing. So what, what differentiates between like a, like a great picture and like an elite picture, or a good picture versus a great picture? Well, as a, going back to like what Levi was saying, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's art. I mean, and art is so um, judgmental. Like you, you get one person and be like, man, that's amazing. And you get another person and go, well, that ain't crap. Um, but a lot of, a lot of thing is composition on it. You know, Hey, where, where are, where are these geese in this picture? You know, what, do, what do they have them doing? Is, is there subject matter behind it? Or is it just a straight up picture of a goose? You know, make it take off their cell phone. Like I got my background right now and I personally love it with these geese coming in. My, my biggest thing is, um, I like action pictures. I like these birds to be doing something. And I think that kind of, that kind of um, separates, you know, okay, pitcher. Okay. Yeah. You got a goose just kind of standing there versus movement in pictures. As far as like, you know, these geese stretching their wings or are they coming into land or they're um, sleeping, you know, d- just different, something different than what you see every day. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then, um, like I said before, it's like a lot of these people, and you said it earlier too, a lot of these people don't aren't going to be able to experience this unless it's through a, a screen. You know what I mean? And we get to see it. A lot of times every day we go, we, we go out, we see birds, we see – how they act in like in, in the wild. So I mean, a lot of times that's why, like you said, even people that don't hunt get these pictures, is because that's really the only time or chance they get to actually see what you know these wild animals are doing in the wild. You know what I mean? I mean a lot, of, you know, a lot of these the same people they have, you know, have have a house on the lake, and you know they have their little binoculars and they look out, you know. But a lot of like again, they don't get to see this like how we do. For sure. I, uh, and that, that's why I, I, I try to tell, um, tell a story a little bit with, with these pictures, you know, Ben, that kind of goes back to, you know, what's good versus great versus excellent is, is can you convey a story in that, that one picture? You know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. What is this, you know, what is this story telling you? You know, if you, if you're looking at this picture and you go, man, I just see a goose. Cool. But if, if you go, man, I, I see that goose, and it, it's got, you know, its head all kind of mangled up and looks like he's been fighting. Um, you know, that, that, that starts telling that little bit of story of, man, I, I wonder, did that goose just get chased by a coyote? You know, was it in a fight with another goose? Is it, is it mating season? Are they all territorial? You know, are they on nest? You know, what, what's kind of going on? Yeah, for sure, man. That, that's an awesome perspective. I mean, I honestly – I am the person that looks at it and says, that's a goose. I mean, and honestly, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, like, again, the least creative person you can ever find. Um, but um, I think like when you look at say the picture that you've got kind of over your shoulder, that, that snowy background, you know, with, with the, the clear detail of the feathers you know, and, and what they're doing to me, that looks badass. you know, like I, I can look at it and say, that's a goose, but it's a goose that looks badass. you know, like, and, and to say that, you know, when, what goes through your head when you're taking the picture of like, what's going on with like the, um, with like the, uh, thought processes of, you know, what, what, what just happened? They just get chased off of the coyote where they fight and where they, where they do all that stuff. That's something that, 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 you know, I never thought of. So, I mean, honestly, like from that, I mean, that concept that might, that might start going through my head when I look at the picture of it, you know, when I start looking at it's, it's specifics. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, that just goes back to literally, I am the most uncreative person you can find, but it, it's, it, but it's, but it's so cool. Like, I mean, like I, I can look at wildlife and I can think it's awesome. I can think it's beautiful. I, you know, and, and and just just think about my experiences with the wildlife or with the with the geese or with the waterfowl and, and that's where i connect with it because like i i just mm -hmm. i i just remember you know an experience where i have seen that in the wild and or, or i have seen you know you know mallards you know lighting in the decoys or i have seen mallards cupped up or you know wing, wing tips touching or or geese you know feet hitting the ice like I mean, it's just when, when you, when you can look at a picture and you can remember, you know, a time when you experienced that and you, and you thought like, man, that's badass, you know, like, I mean, to, to me that that's, that's what like a picture should do. Or that's what like a, 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 you know, wildlife photography should do. I mean, and you, you can go check out, you know, Taylor's, um, Taylor's Instagram page. And that, that's what he does. I mean, even, even team foul played Instagram pages, but that's what he does on both. Um, so I mean, it, it, it's just awesome, but I guess so. We you are such at... a way with words, Ben. <laughs> it's a goose, but it's badass, dude. Man, <laughs> look, look, it, it is what it is. Again, the least creative person. Yeah, you I mean, you're not wrong. Find. You're not wrong. Yeah, man. So we we talked about a little bit about snow goose hunting earlier, uh, and, and you mentioned that you have this the TFP shirt that you're wearing. You created. Uh, specifically for for snow goose hunting um so snow goose hunting is not a whole lot, not something that a whole lot of people across the country get to do and it's really not something that um that a lot of people are able to just up and decide to go do um, i mean no no i mean you you can go buy you know two dozen duck decoys for for a relatively decent price you know a cheap shotgun and a cheap duck call 
then go out and, and, you know, and do some hunting if you're, you know, for, for around, you know, a little under, I mean, around 500 bucks, maybe a little more, um, depending on how nice the waders you get, or if you just want to swim, but, um, snow goose hunting is completely different. You know, you're, you, you know, you're, you're a couple thousand thousand dollars into it. And w once you start, you're never done, you know? So I mean, no. it, it's not something that, that just a regular, regular Joe Schmo just gets to go pick up, um, go drop a couple of dollars on and go do. So, I mean, um, it, it, it's awesome that, you know, we, we both got the experience of it as such a, you know, teenager or some, and, 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 and we, we got to get out there and, you know, shoot snow geese as, as, uh, as teenagers and kind of, kind of off some other, uh, kind of off of, uh, some other people's dime a little bit, <laughs> but, uh, but you, you, you've definitely got it, um, going for yourself and you've definitely maintaining it and, and doing it yourself is, is awesome. I mean, I'm, I know you have other, other people that do it with you and team foul play kind of does it all together, but, uh, um, but let's just, we, let's just kind of talk a little bit about what what goes into you know running your own snow goose spread. Uh, a lot of work. <laughs> That's what goes into it. <laughs> a whole lot of work, and as you said, a whole lot of money. Um, man, snow geese. Ooh, everybody, you love them and hate them all at the same time. You know, we we're both as you said, very fortunate to get in with um, the Gales with, you know, Tyler and, and Todd having decoys already and, you know, kind of starting us out that way. And, you know, since then I've I bought, you know, a few more decoys to have myself. And, but, man, trying to run your own spread by yourself, good luck. Um, you, you need four or five guys in there, in there with you. It, it's work. So every day you get out the spread and, you know, the wind winds change a little bit, so you're um, – you're constantly moving decoys, fixing decoys. Um, you know, if you had some heavy wind the night before, blew it over. The dog running through your spread, and that's just permanent spreads. Um, you're constantly checking it over because each day you get these these birds, and you know, you're, you're talking ducks. You, you might get a group of fifty in, and you, you start talking snow geese, and you, you know, your big groups are thousands of birds and that's just thousands of eyes just picking you apart so when you when you think you know what you're doing yeah good luck something that always got me with snow goose hunting man is is uh you know af after you you get a couple thousand birds tornado on on you they fly out and you look down and you got shit all over your stuff <laughs> yes oh for sure <laughs> yeah you look i'm so you're like, everybody's like, don't look up at them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, literally, you have shit on your stuff. There's a thousand birds, you guarantee a couple of them are, are crapping all over your stuff. And, uh, but we, uh, we, we run per, semi permanent to permanent spreads. Um, you know, we, we'll, we'll take our field, you know, every year and, you know, we will put it out hopefully before they get here. Um, and, The last geese real early, so we, we've been pushing having stakes in, um, drilling holes. However, we gotta get them in the ground, and and just just to hunt them. And the season starts thawing, you're you're back out there pushing farther in the ground. Yeah, man. So you've run. So if I mean, um, Jesus Christ, Ben. <laughs> go ahead man um, <laughs> so like if, do you have like a certain field where you hunt them or do you kind of um scout around your area and then find the field they're going to you, then ask permission because if like if someone is trying to get into snow goose hunting um like we've talked about it before if you were if you're where they want to be could you just just sit there and just just ambush them or is it just birds all just new birds coming in consistently and they're looking for those big numbers? So a little bit of both. I mean, just like any other waterfowl, being on X is key. I mean, if you can find a field that's hot, I mean, be where they want to be. Uh, that's the way to do it. We get a little bit lazier and like just to, to run, you know, our, our 10,000 decoys or whatever we have, 6,000. 
um, out and leave them. We don't want to be picking them up every weekend, chasing different feeds. Um, man, props to the guys that do that. You know, a lot of the outfitters do that. That way they stay on fresh birds. Um, but but if you're if you're on the X, you can get by with a, a lot less decoys. Um, we, we did it a couple of times uh, last year and the year before, just moving around, you know, running a thousand, thousand bird spread, which, you know, seems a lot as far as, you know, duck numbers and, you know, if you're talking about honker numbers and stuff, but for snow geese, you know, a thousand birds, that's nothing. That spread's not not very long, not very wide. You need giving them little like the mountains and take the take them take uh, aerial footage, man. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. I, I've got a little cheap drone that goes back to our photography stuff. I got a little cheap eighty dollar Walmart drone, and yeah, uh, the video off it is awful. So I haven't. Yeah, it I, I thought about getting one, and then uh, there was a guy here. It's not on the marketplace for like sixty bucks. I started looking at like I went straight to YouTube. Like the frames were skipping really bad. I'm like, nah, I'll save my money and get a nice no. little Mavic. Yeah, that's no, don't waste your money on the cheap ones, but I can't, I can't go spend four or five hundred bucks right now on, on a drone. Now we, we talked to start getting paid for some of these videos and, and pictures and stuff. Different story, but um, that's something for sure though. Is snow geese when it comes to um, like creating video and picture content. I mean when you can get when I mean, you can show the sheer amount of snow geese that you get coming down the mississippi river you know i think that's something that this could that grab people's attention you know because because you know i i don't think that the majority i won't say the majority of waterfowl hunters i think every, i think if you're a true waterfowl hunter you've at least seen the pictures you've at least seen snow goose hunting videos but I, I don't think a the majority of people in general understand what a true whiteout is you know, I mean, like, I like, like, you, you. There's times, you know, throughout a snow goose season, where you pick a county road, you follow it, and you're gonna find a field covered in snow geese. Just whether or not that farmer is gonna allow you to hunt it or not is the issue in hunting them. Finding the geese is not the issue when it comes to a whiteout conservation order in, you know, along the Mississippi River. It's insane. And like, you know, I grew up next to Mississippi all my life, but not until, um, you know, I really started getting into hunting snow geese that I started, you know, watching the migration of them. Like, oh, I mean, we get this many around every year. And, and especially over on the Missouri side of the river, um, it's just a bunch more farm ground right along the river. And man, those birds traffic up it and it gets crazy. Like you were saying, that those whiteouts. I mean, it literally looks like somebody just snowed on one field. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, we go back to the uh, um, that question Levi was talking about earlier. You know, what what's what's your tips for you know layout blind hunting and you know that kind of stuff. Um, man it's a whole lot easier when you're not in a layout blind. If you're just under those decoys taking pictures of birds versus that layout. I, I've tried the layout. I've tried laying that camera right here on my chest and, and sitting there trying to take pictures as birds are coming over and it's difficult. But once, once you're out there underneath, you know, you know, 10 dozen socks right over you and you know, kind of blend you in, it's a whole lot easier to move around, take pictures of, um, you know, you get specs that get to come in during that season the migration back north of all the waterfowl species really i mean ducks start pouring through there around here we don't get many pintails it seems like in the fall but man are they all over you in the spring i don't know if it's the snow goose spread if it's just the time of year that they're pushing back through what it is but I mean, you'll get big bull uh sprig pintails at 15 yards from you yeah, and you'll, you'll have swans trying to put their feet down in your face, too. <laughs> the, the amount of swans that are starting to stay around here is getting ridiculous. Yeah, I, I believe I saw it, man. my first swan, like, up close in North Dakota when we were hunting. And those things are I – I mean, I mean, I always knew that they are big. Like, I saw one that was mounted there in um, – uh, a place I told you about in Missouri that we used to go hunt all the time, uh, Otter Slough, Otter Slough. I mean, they had one mounted up in there, um, but just seeing them like in person and then 
flying like over our spread. It's insane, man. I can see why and why they cost so much to get mounted because all the work that has to go into it and the materials, those things are freaking massive, man. I like to get, I'd like to draw a tag one year and kill one. I, uh, yeah. I, I'd love to do the same, but man, as you were saying, that taxidermy bill, who good golly. Is it up, yeah. upwards of like a thousand or so? Yeah. 900. It, it's up there. All man. depends on uh, what taxiderm what taxidermist you're taking it to and uh, how much uh, what quality you charging. want. Yes. Can you imagine shipping one of those things, dude? Jesus Christ. Yeah. A <laughs> hundred dollars and just shipping it. Oh. Yeah. Right. But so, we uh, uh, we found out last year we got on some uh, some spec and, and snow geese slash honker hunts combined. Um, these birds were starting to stay around here more or they're, they're migrating back through a little bit sooner in that conservation order about the time the swans are all around here. And if, if you go find a field that's got a few swans in it, guess what? Them snow geese are coming in that field too. I can't tell you how many times we'd be like, all right, oops, swans went down that field. Guess where all those geese are about to go. And they just sit there and tornado down yep. in there. And you're, you just shake your head like, well, might as well pack up the decoys because they went the day. So yeah, how many swans like 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 we see in a field like together? On the last couple of years, they've been coming through like crazy. It was nothing to see four or five hundred oh, swans in a field. Okay, yeah. But say maybe if you get like a couple dozen swan decoys, just throw them out instead of snows. Oh, we <laughs> we've thought about it. Some of those old I think um Flambu made them they're just giant shells that you could hide, yeah. you know, a semi uh, truck. Under. I have some, but they're Canadians. They're freaking yeah. massive. Yes. They're, That's they're a, like, we're actually, like my waist. We were actually talking about those like la on our last episode. Uh, it just came out today, actually. Um, yeah. We we're actually we we're actually talking about those on our last episode, talking about how you know what, what we used to do, but before we before we had the the money to to actually have layout blinds, we'd pull those things over top of us. They'd come all the way up to about our shoulders. And then, you know, keeps come up, we just flip off us and shoot. But, um, but yeah, man, so the last question that, that I've got for you before we let you go, I know we're, we're taking up a, a you know, ton of your time. It's, it's getting, and it's getting a little late. We don't want you to you know, miss work tomorrow or miss, miss teal season or whatever it is you got to do tomorrow. Uh, say, um, oh, <laughs> I got work in the, the afternoon, so I, I'm not worried about missing work. <laughs> uh, I mean, getting up but, to, uh, Go watch some teal fly, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, man. But so how many snow geese, you know, do you kill I mean, on average every year? I know, I know like some guys keep running tallies, other guys, other, other groups don't, but like, cause, cause I think, you know, you look at, you know, the, the Quincy bottoms, you know, and even the, the West Quincy bottoms, um, outside of like, you know, places like, um, like, uh, what is it? Swan or, what is it out there in, in North Kansas city, the squaw Creek um, outside mm -hmm. like squaw Creek or like some, some of the places in Arkansas, um, you know, the, I don't know. I, I, I'm partial to, you know, the, the Quincy bottoms and, and, and West Quincy bottoms. Cause there's, it just, I, I think it's very underrated with the amount of snow geese that come through there. And I, we, uh, we decided about a couple of years back that we uh, we were going to move over to the Illinois side, um, kind of get out of, the, out of the Missouri bottoms just a little bit and uh, try to find us some some water. And we we found a uh, a farmer got permission on it, and he's got a slough ditch about thirty yards wide and shoot a few hundred yards long um, to try to set up on um, down by the New Canton bottoms. And uh, that was two years ago. And our our first year, I mean, it stunk, but it seemed like everybody had a terrible year. I think we were pushing about a hundred birds that year, but it was, we were talking to guys that typically kill five, 600 birds a year. And they were going work. We killed 200, 250 this year when it was just all these adults coming through the juvie hatch was bad, but on average, we, we shoot 150, 175 birds. I mean, good numbers, but nothing to, nothing to brag about. We're not, we're not Tony Vandemore over here or, right. um, you know, around here we have, we have team Toehead. We have the, the Doyle boys, man, those boys put in a lot of work and man, do they kill a lot of birds. Yeah. But you're also talking about, you know, you know, a group of guys that all have full-time jobs. 
you know, that that's also something to take into account. You know, if, if you, if you look at, you shoot 100, 150, 175 birds and you, you're hunting for, you know, Sundays and Saturdays, you know, throughout the season, you know, imagine what that looks like if you're hunting, you know, you know, Monday through Saturday and taking a Sunday off, you know, like, or, or even, you know, taking, you know, hunting to the weekend, but scouting all week. You know what I mean? When you got a full-time job, it's not like you can, you can have yeah. full day. You, you, you have to choose whether or not you're going to hunt, whether or not you're going to scout. You, you got to choose whether or not you're going to take a day off or whether or not you're going to hunt. You know, like you're talking about like, you know, people mm -hmm. who have the, their job. I mean, I'm not saying the towhead guys, their job is to hunt, but like they, they've got a group of guys where they can go um, and, and, and leave the, the towhead guys that we're talking about. They're, they're, they're the, the guys who made that video with Boone uh, from and Higdon down there in uh, Pleasant Hill, uh, Illinois. Um, and so they, they, they destroy birds all year round. I mean, that, that's what, I mean, that's what they do, but they, they have a whole group of guys. I mean, guys that, that I, mean, I mean, the amount of people that hunt that property, um, I mean, but, the, but they don't, they don't all hunt there at the same time, but they all contribute contributes to, to why they kill so many birds and the same thing with you know tony vandemore and places like that when when people like that but when you talk about tfp you've got a group of guys that all have full-time jobs all the way through the week and then they and then they hunt saturday and sunday you know and still killing 175 birds you know over a you know month and a half season and, and the snow goose cons the conservation order goes quick it's not like the conservation like this, the conservation order isn't like isn't like you know duck season you know duck season you've got you know 60 days and you're hunting 60 days and birds are going to be there for the majority of those 60 days give or take the conservation order the last like two or three weeks i mean like it it's not really worth hunting anymore oh and about that, about that time, you know, the weather starts getting pretty nice and um, all the farmers go, hey, you know, we want, we want our field back. Sorry, you got to get out of the field, you know, pick the decoys up. And uh, like you're saying, it's not, not worth it. So, you know, we pick the decoys up and you're like, well, yeah, there's going to be still a few scragglers coming through. You know, do we go set a spread back out? Do we, do we call it a season, start going crappie fishing, mushroom hunting? Um, and that's what most of us end up doing. We're like, once we pick up for the year, we're like, it's good. We're, we're done. And it seems like all the all the good days that the birds are there, you get two guys in the blind, or you, you might get lucky and have three guys in the blind. You know, we don't have 10, 12 guys in the blind shooting volleys off, you know, dropping 20, 25 birds at a time. That's insane, man. Like, like what's going to happen like, if a guy shoots a band and, like, everyone's shooting? Is it like, just flip, like, draw straws pretty much? Did you, we you, haven't you had just, that happen you just yet deal for, with it. for snow geese. You just deal with it. So, like, I, I it, it was my first year snow goose hunting, and, and Tyler, I was actually with Tyler and Todd, and uh, um, it, I, I had, I didn't know anything. I mean, like, I, I mean, I knew banded birds were like a, like a big deal, but I didn't really know why. I didn't really like, I, I, I didn't know anything. But we had a group, of, you know, one of those like, you know, huge groups of birds. And I mean, I think we dropped like, I mean, the three of us, I mean, I think we dropped like eight, maybe nine birds out of it. You know, we were running like chickens with their heads cut off, picking up all the birds. Picked up a blue goose that was banded. And, uh, you know, um, you know, Tyler, um, he, 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 he knew he shot that bird. Um, but we get back to the house and we're cleaning the birds and Todd, is you know resting out a bird and he starts screaming freaking out you know we're like whoa what's going on it was, he was cleaning a he, he was breasting out a bird that had just been and that, that was banded and we shot so we shot two birds two banded birds out of one group you know and and todd you know he he was shoot, he was the only person shooting blindside and so he he knew that he shot that one but had he not been shooting blindside it would have been a free-for-all between the three of us you know what i mean like like <laughs> like we, no, nobody would have known, but the only reason he knew was because he was the only one shooting blindside. So there's these square, these square poles and the, the goose of breast. Yeah, he still, uh, he still talks about that story. 
Yeah, yeah, man. Blue Ge- Blue Geese are pretty too, man. Um, I like think I like get one for the wall too. But I don't know. Like Ben can to it can attest to this too. Like a lot of guys out here on the East Coast are like, man, if I ever kill a mallard, I'm getting it mounted. And then you know, you know, like us, we're like, man, those things are a dime a dozen. You know, I mean, back home. But I mean, I guess I feel like the same way about Canadians too. It's like I I, I don't really you know, I don't know if I can get it. Maybe if it was like a uh, quill. Uh, quill Lake. Yeah, quill, yeah. I mean, if I shoot one of them, I'd get them out. I'm just a regular Canadian. I just, I just, just can't see myself. It, maybe if it feels like, like a special, like my, like my bird dog's last retrieve, or you know, like my kid's first bird. Maybe that'd be a little bit different. Just, just a regular old Canadian. I don't think I get mounted, but man, them specs and blue geese are just so pretty, man. I love the coloring on them. I know for sure. Um, you know, I've got my my blue goose and my spec, and I was like, man. I shoot enough blue geese. I don't really want to get it mounted, but it was, it was that story behind it. Um, we were actually, I was hunting with another group of guys that day for some honkers. And then I was going back with our group of guys to go set the decoy spread. And we got majority of the decoy spread out and here we are and got the trucks in, in the spread or next to the spread. And here comes this blue goose and he's just mature as all can get out. And he's circling the spread, circling the spread. I was the only one to have a gun. I'm like, you know what? He makes another pass at it. I'm going I'm to shoot him. I pulled up, shot him. He sailed way out. Well, I had my, my dog with me, lined him up, sent him on it. And, and uh, he's retrieved geese before and ducks, but, but never really uh, snow geese much. And so he marked it. I mean, it was, it was a hundred, 200 yard retrieve. And, you know, you'll get a lot of guys that go, well, that's not that far for bird dogs to go. Well, it was for my dog at the time. So here he comes, brings it back. And he's just so proud. And, and just, I was like, man, Tyler told me, he goes, if, if you're ever going to get a bird mounted, he goes, that's a real mature bird. You know, no, there's no blood on it, no real broken wings. Uh, it wasn't terrible. So I'm mounted. He's got a couple real cool uh, white patches right where his uh, wings fold in. So I was like, you know, we'll get him mounted and done up. So it turned out pretty cool. Yeah, man. So we're, we are, um, I, I, just to go off topic one last time before we, before we wrap this thing up. But, uh, you, you, your your dog um you know it, it, it's kind of special because he he's he's not a young dog and he was he was never a hunting dog you know what i mean so like to to get him to a point where he's he's doing that it is it's special and, and, and cool to, to especially to, to you know to actually teach an old dog new tricks you know i think i think that that's something that's awesome For sure, yeah. We uh, we kind of rescued him um, at a year and a half, you know, back when I was with mom and dad, and he was bred to be a hunt dog and stuff. And, and the guy that that bought him wanted was going to train him to be a hunt dog, and just didn't have the time. And you know, we got him when he's a year and a half, and and man, I want to say I I trained him all myself, but man, I think he more trained me than anything. Just this dog is sharp, and but now he's. He's pushing 10 and, and watching him get out in these, these fields is rough. He, he runs slower and everything else, but I try to leave him at home sometimes so he gets some rest and, oh, he about rips the door down trying to get out there. He's like, I'm not, not you're not leaving me. I took him dove season and he was a little rusty, you know, like we all are after coming off that, that break after snow goose season, you know, back into the September and dove season. And, but once he got the hang of it, he was, he was right back to it. And I'm excited to see him work this dove season and, and hopefully this spring I, I got a guy lined up to uh, breed him so I can get a puppy off him. That's cool. Man, I always hate when I'm on Facebook and I see like uh, someone posted, like someone posted a video of like a duck dog over the years. And it's like to his last retrieve and yep. to like where the dogs in the air. And I'm like, man, screw you Facebook. I don't want to see this right now. No. I mean, <laughs> Forever. It, it, it's sad. Hits you right in the feels every time. I'm like, man, can you not? Absolutely, absolutely. So is it? Is this gonna be his last uh, hunting full hunting season? So you think it's gonna be- I'm hope I'm hoping he's got a couple couple years left. I wish I would have brought him a little sooner, but I was living with mom and dad, and they didn't want another uh, puppy in the house and stuff. So we waited a little bit, and I should have brought him last year. Just didn't have time with moving in the house and doing a bunch of renovations to it. Um, but he, he's getting old, but I'd love to see him hunt one or two more times just to, um, you know, get out there and help train that new puppy. 
I just think it'd be awesome to have father and you know father and son or father and daughter, whichever we decide to get you know out there hunting together. Yeah, so I'm for sure. I can a couple more years. You're not, think, let the pups, I mean, you're not gonna let the pups decide the years. whichever they're gonna be. <laughs> Jesus. <What> a- <laughs> Jeez, no, man. This but is- uh, but no, I think it'd be cool, like over the years, to have like each dog's last retrieve on a dead amount. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. It'd be pretty sentimental. Have like the, have like a little plaque underneath the mm-hmm. day, like where you're at location. I think that'd be pretty mm-hmm. cool. Kind of, kind of neat to have. Kind of going back to the uh, like the video too. Same thing. It's just every time you look at that, you'll kind of throughout the years. Get to relive it all, and absolutely you know, for sure. He, uh, it, it's cool, and it, it sucks watch watching him slow down. But just yeah, you can look at his face and go, "Yep, he, you know he's an older dog and stuff." But as as soon as I say, "Hey, you want to go hunting?" He his face instantly changes, and he looks like he's back, back into puppy mode and just ready to go. He could care less if we shoot anything or not. He just wants to go and wants to be by my side, and it, so it, it's cool just to have a you know hunting companion. It's awesome, man. But I think that that's all I've got for you, man. Um, unless Levi's got something else for you, we'll quit. We'll quit wasting your time. We'll let you get back to it, man. No, man, I ain't got nothing else for him. Uh, Taylor, if you want to tell people again where they can follow you or Team Foul Play um, on social media and where they can find your merch too. Yep. So um, my my personal page um, on Instagram, if you just type in uh, Taylor Howerton. Uh, T-Y-L-O-R, Howerton, H-O-W-E-R-T-O-N. You should be able to uh, pull it up there. Or it's uh, Tay Howerton Photos uh, and the number one. And that's on Instagram. And then, you know, my, my Facebook page is under Taylor Howerton. And then um, Team Foul Played, all you got to do is get on there and um, type in Team Foul Played um, Outdoors, and it should pop right up. You'll see the TFP logo right on our um, Facebook page and right on our instagram and then um get on youtube we're on youtube as well with team foul play type it in there we got several uh deer hunt videos and waterfowl videos on there so love to have you guys follow along for the adventures you know send me any questions you guys have about photography or team foul play the merchandise stuff is on the team foul play stuff and we're uh, launching some new stuff here pretty soon yeah ben screw going and North Carolina, let's just go out and hunt snows. We should run the blind and team foul play collab, dude. Let's look, go. Man, I, look, man, I, I, I would be down. Um, let's go. It, it, has, um, it has been probably. Here comes what? every other excuse in the book. Here, here, here. <laughs> <laughs> look, man, I'm not making the excuse right now. It would be awesome. Man, you're going to come home, man. Like I haven't been home in a year and a half. It's all, It's always a good time, and. You know, yeah, get get the crew back together. You know, Tyler. Now that he's moved back home, yeah, it'd be, that'd be Tyler, a fun time. Tyler and I have not been have not both been back in Quincy at the same time. You know, I mean, I think since since we both left. So uh, we all we, all, yeah. we obviously yeah. all we obviously all met up in in Kansas a couple of years ago for that teal hunt or for the or, uh, opening day of uh, big duck season. But um, but yeah, since then we haven't we haven't all got back together. But so it, it would be awesome, man. And, and this time we can drag yeah, him along. He, he'd be the guy to put to put a fake band on a bird. That's, that's what he get for being a Cubs fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, we, we could we could make it happen. That would be. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. I I would I would one hundred percent be down. But all right, man. Well, we appreciate you hopping on here, man. So we will um we'll definitely have you back on. We'll definitely reach back out. Cool, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. All right, man. Have a good one. All right, man. So that was Taylor Howerton from Team Foul Played Outdoors. Um, Yeah, I mean, just just awesome guy. Um, Like I said, childhood friend uh, of mine. Um, You know, co-founded Team Foul Played, now doing um, Team Foul Played and uh, Taylor Howerton Photography. If, If you haven't checked them out, go ahead, check them out. They I mean, like I said, content is second to none, um, and and he, he's just he's determined to give to give uh, every, everything that he has regarding um, wildlife photography. And 
mean, any, anybody who can capture the beauty that we all see on a day-to-day -day basis is, is, is just, it's just amazing. Because like I said, once again, the creativity problem, something that I would not be able to do. And I, you know, kudos to, to him for being able to, to recreate that, you know, the, the, the beautiful scenes that, that we all enjoy seeing. And it, you can tell, like, he, he has that drive too. like, just listen to him talk. Like he almost wants it to be his full-time job. Just go out and find birds, take pictures of them. You know what I mean? And that's how he earns his living, which is very possible. It's just, again, can I go back to say he definitely has a drive and I can definitely, he's very knowledgeable. So he can, he can go as far as he wants with it. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and waterfowl is an art. I mean, you, you see waterfowl paintings, you know, like everywhere, you know, I mean, the, 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 the federal stamps that we buy every year are hand drawn by, by an artist, by a waterfowl artist. Right. Um, phot photography is, is an art. I mean, uh, what waterfowl is, is, it is an art. Um, I mean, I mean, um, I mean, it's obviously, you know, art by God's creation, but the people who can, who can you know, capture it. And like I said, like I've said a couple of times already in, in a way that we all see them when we go out there and in a way that we all see them or when we respect them. Um, it, it's just amazing because um, I, I, it's, it's crazy to me that, that, that we are at a point to where you can do that and, and, and people can recognize your talent and people can recognize, you know, connect with with hunts or, or connect with ways that they've seen the waterfowl in their own in their own hunting. Yeah, and I think that might be why you just see a goose is because you've seen them so many of them over the years and you see them in the wild and you see them be a wild animal. So maybe that's why you only see a goose or you only see a duck, whatever. Yeah. And whenever someone else you know, that hasn't seen that, they'll be like, oh, I wonder what he's doing. I wonder what it's got done, like, kind of like he's saying, like the whole thought process behind it. So, yeah, and like I said, that's not a perspective that I had ever, I had ever had or ever even thought of. I, I just thought, you know, that, that, that's a cool picture or, or a beautiful picture or a cool scenery. You know, I, I right. didn't, I, I didn't think about the full story of it. I mean, it just, it's just crazy that, that, that he can capture that. Or and that and that's what he sees when he takes the pictures. But, um, but, but yeah, guys. So we are we're we're, we're closing in on our on our giveaway. Um, so we'll yep. be announcing we'll be announcing the winners of the giveaway coming up soon. We'll be announcing the uh, and once we get to five hundred, we're going to give it away this Tech Time game call. Um, and we, so we I was thinking. We're pretty much at 400 right now, um, and we're talking about how long we're going to run the Tuck Tongue Game Call giveaway. I'm thinking once we get done with – I mean, if you're listening to it now, if you listen, especially if you listen to it Sunday night, Monday morning, if you still want to get in on the, the lanyard and the bonus item, please do it. Right now, Eric Presley's running away with it because he's the only one that has entered. So uh, – um, you know, I kind of hope he does win too, because he does every time we post something, he shares it. So I really appreciate you, Eric. But uh, but yeah, I mean it's still wide open. So, I mean, if one other person enters, you have a fifty-fifty shot of winning something free, shipped to your door, yeah. on our on our on our on our pocket. So um, again, whether you have one or not, like Ben said, just enter it. Um, then if you get it and you sell in the marketplace, whatever. I mean. We're just, just doing free. this to, right? Yeah, we're doing it to help out uh, Mr. Allen and get some exposure for Ackley Outdoors, and also get some more exposure for us too. So um, once we close the the lanyard, I'm just going to open up for the duck call, and y'all can um, y'all can start inviting friends and enter for that, um, and we'll just let it run until. We get to 500 if we start going quick. If not, and it starts petering out really, really hard, we'll put, we'll set a date for it yep. to close it off. But um, but yeah, guys, I mean, you guys have th two opportunities to win two really good handmade custom items. Um, 
through us and um all you gotta do is just like tag a hunting buddy in the comments and just share the post that's it we're not asking you to send in money we're not asking it's not like a raffle or anything like that which is helping us help you so for that again if you, if you put in for the lanyard you'll get two entries on the um tecton game call so guys i mean we're just i mean we're just giving you a free bone there so uh again please share comment tag uh, add, add your buddies um every week but um let us know let us know how, how we're doing let us know what you like to see or hear or, you know, if we're going too long or, you know, know what I mean. And then if we do post something in advance, like an event, um, if you have a question for them, feel free to comment comment on it. We will we'll, we'll be more than happy to ask it, that question for them. So, uh, but yeah, please be interactive. Um, if you, I don't know about uh, Spotify or Google, but if you listen to on, on Apple – Please give us five stars or whatever you guys think it's worth and um, leave a comment um, or leave a review saying why. It, we, if you are five-star worthy or four or three, let us know what we can do. Um, like, like we said before, we really want you guys to be active, and hopefully we can get to that point. Um, uh, maybe you guys are still feeling us out a little bit, which is fine, but hopefully we can get to the point where we post a video. We'll have five or six, ten comments that, guys, that was a good job, or I wish you'd ask this question. And if we do, we can definitely get you in contact with that person. And uh, you, you can, well, I'm sure whoever we have on here would be more than happy to answer any questions you guys have. So Yeah, without a doubt. And, and one big thing, too, is is if you have somebody who you want to be featured on our show, um, let us know. Um, we, we, are, we are an open book, um, and we, we thoroughly enjoy talking to any waterfowlers. But... Um, yeah, go ahead, like us on our Facebook, enter in the contest, um, subscribe on your, on whatever your, um, your podcast site is. Um, but otherwise this has been the round the Blind podcast guys. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.